time to target the upper chest. What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics where it is all about classic bodybuilding and what you're seeing right now in this frame is three guys, me, my brother and our friend in the gym wearing Vintage Genetics apparel, clothing, gym wear. Yes, that is right, it's going quite well, the website will be announced, launched very soon within a couple of days you now just the final touch-ups are getting done and once they are because I don't want to release anything that's not entirely perfect I will announce it across all social media so as you can see this is a chest workout and I recommend this for most people who have been training for a long time not beginners but you know intermediates to advanced start off more often with an isolation exercise before hitting your compounds especially on a day you know on a weak point day for me that's the upper chest in specific and we're doing the incline uh, dumbbell fly actually making sure that we get a good stretch but we don't want to bring the dumbbells too close together because then you lose the contraction. So the reason why you should start out with an isolation exercise is for me, my front delts, my triceps, they usually take over. And that is why I'm having trouble building the upper chest. At least that's what I had the previous years in the last couple of years of training I always start out with the regular bench press the regular dumbbell press but I just noticed that when there's a certain pattern when there's a certain way of you moving the weight and if it's chest you're doing the uh, compound exercise yet your chest is not growing your body is just used to that way of moving the weight using different muscles predominantly over your chest as well so using a lot of front delts using a lot of triceps so that is why I start out with an isolation movement so that I target purely the chest and a fly is perfect because that is one of the only exercises actually that hits the chest purely you can do this with cable flies peg decks or dumbbell flies you know put some variation in your workouts and now it is time for the first compound movement but we're working on the upper chest so again it's an incline and it's a slight incline to keep the stress off the front delts and more on the chest you know the more straight you sit up the more the tension is shifted to the front delts so that is why i like to put the incline very slight so now the chest is basically pre-exhausted and that means that you already feel a pump you already feel the upper chest or at least the entire chest working and this is my dad doing some dumbbell pullovers i believe he was doing or you know he was doing back i believe this day but we are doing chest so the incline dumbbell press importantly the difference between a dumbbell press and a bench press with a barbell is that you can stretch uh, the arms deeper stretching the chest deeper you can you know if the bar was here it would literally go through your chest so you can go deeper with the dumbbells and it is more difficult to balance the weight causing a, uh, those little balancing muscles to be affected as well and for overall health and balance in your body that is a great thing to have um, so that is why you should alternate between a bench press and a dumbbell press from time to time and the same goes for cable flies and dumbbell flies and peg decks just alternate between these exercises because the dumbbells the free weights will always be superior to the machines 
only for people usually beginners who are having trouble contracting the chest but as you can see right here the chest is in full contraction and stretch using these free weight dumbbells but if you're having trouble really using the chest while doing the exercise then doing machines and cables which allow you to have constant tension will help you with mind muscle connection but when you're intermediate to advanced you should use more free weights than machines unless you have a specific reason why you're using a, a machine for example having shoulder issues knee issues elbow issues that you want to fix first before going to the heavy free weights so what you're seeing is that we are focusing here on the stretch of the chest without really bringing the dumbbells uh, in together at the top because sure it will contract the chest but once you are at the top of the movement you lose tension on the chest of course you feel it when you contract it but the load on the muscle is gone and this is the heaviest set of dumbbells in this gym in the previous gym they went up to 60 kilos but this is a quite a nice weight to do a full range of motion with good form and to really uh, execute the movement correctly to be able to contract and stretch utilize the muscle fibers of the chest effectively and efficiently a lot of guys go way too heavy and risk injuring themselves time to target the upper chest guillotine chest press bench press so yes this is the guillotine bench press which is basically letting the bar drop to your throat just like the old school guillotine machine to uh, decapitate one's head and this is basically the same so you let the bar go down to your throat and that targets the upper portion of the chest more but also guys also the front delt so you want to look out for this you really don't want to go heavy on this one uh, that's why i'm doing it as a third exercise i never start with this exercise because all that does is give you too much strength and one mistake using that much weight can cause a major shoulder injury so that's why we are going pretty light and using a controlled uh, range of motion to be able to really uh, make sure that our shoulders are not doing most of the work but it's really on the upper chest and this also requires some mind muscle connection because you have to feel the upper chest work and you have to know when your shoulders are doing the bulk of the work and if they are you have to lighten the weight so this is a pretty heavy weight this is the last set this is as heavy as i go this is about 30 to 50 kilos less than my regular bench press I just happen to be quite strong in this bench press so don't take this as an example that you can go really heavy um, starting out with a plate of 10 kilos on each side is what I recommend for most people just to get a feel for this exercise as you can see I go down really slow I control the movement because it is very important that you control it on the way down because that is the part of the range of the motion the part of the exercise that most people make the mistakes with <laughs> and i told this a couple of times before but my chest workouts are starting out with an isolation exercise then do two compounds and ending with an isolation exercise and as you can see i'm trying to really use the upper chest again on this movement by letting my arms go upwards just a little bit as i do the fly and if you look closely you can see the upper pecs working and again uh, the front delts it's very hard to get them out of the movement so do not worry if you feel them work it's okay because at the end of the workout your upper chest is pretty much fatigued so it will um, tire out way before the front delts if you did the other exercises properly so 
So as I mentioned before, the main difference between the cable flies and the double flies we did at the start is that here you should go all the way inwards with your arms so that your chest is fully contracted. On the dumbbells you lose the tension, but on the cables the tension is actually increased at the very end of the movement. So do it when doing the cables, but not when doing dumbbell flies. So here you can see a little more clearly that the upper chest is involved, but also that the movement of this exercise consists of two aspects, the stretch and the contraction. A lot of people uh, skip or just do it halfway one of these aspects, just like the stretch you see on the ends of the pectoral muscle, you see little striations and that's the chest stretching. That means that the muscle fibers are being stretched and when they're contracting you see the striations again. So when you're lean enough and you see that, then you know that you're doing the exercise just right. After four chest exercises pushing pretty hard, it is time for the triceps. I like combining chest and triceps because every time I do chest, inevitably your triceps are being worked as well so i just like to finish them off with two to three good exercises for the triceps to really make sure that i hit them fully just like i fully hit the chest now some people like doing uh, chest and biceps and back and triceps for example using the argument that when you're doing chest your triceps are already pretty fatigued so i cannot really work them as hard as if i would do triceps on a back day because then you don't use triceps beforehand well you know there's two sides of the spectrum here because i like to finish the muscle off i see it as an advantage you already work the triceps so why not work them a little more to finish them off completely uh, as opposed to when they're still fresh it's basically doing two fresh muscle groups in one day uh, to me that is you know requires a little more effort and it's more difficult to really push yourself anyway after doing all those exercises beforehand and then doing another muscle group so that's why i like doing combining back and biceps chest and triceps and even rear delts and back and side delts and chest because they all work together so uh, what we did is the overhead tricep extension on, on the machine we just did there that's for the long head of the tricep which causes the most mass on the tricep uh, which you can see right here the uh, machine dips you can put these this machine in two separate settings the bars that I'm holding right there, the handles, you can put them inwards or outwards. And you always want to put them inwards when doing triceps. Because the more outwards they go, the more you target the chest. Medial head. Yes, what I was just going to say is that you hit the medial head the most using this exercise. It's basically a pressing movement. You can compare it to a small grip bench press or a, a small grip or narrow grip a easy curl press on the regular bench but this one is the best according to most bodybuilders to really target the triceps uh, the medial head which is also the thickness of the triceps but it also hits the long head as you can see with cane that the bulk of the triceps are being targeted when doing this dip exercise and then again a very interesting exercise that usually I'm doing with dumbbells, the overhead tricep extension using one arm, but this time we're using a cable. And this is slightly different from using a dumbbell because the difference is when you go all the way up, you still feel some kind of tension, not as much as uh, normally on the cables. For example, when doing cable flies, but you still feel more tension than when doing a dumbbell overhead extensions with one arm 
because when you go up with the dumbbell, literally the gravity is pushing it right through your joint, which is no tension at all. But when I go up here, I can still contract the triceps very well, especially the short head. So this exercise is almost a complete exercise. Uh, hitting both the long head because of the stretch going overhead behind the head and of course the small head of the triceps because when you go upwards and contract it you contract the small head so it's a complete very well balanced tricep exercise And you can pretty much literally see it right there when Kane goes down you can see the long head stretching and when he goes upwards you can see the small head contracting so both of these are working during this exercise. And as I usually do, I like to combine, as I mentioned before, the side delts with the chest workout. I don't normally have a separate shoulder day. My delts, especially the rear delts and the front delts, are simply too developed to really work them once more in the week. So that's why I just do one exercise during chest for the shoulders, which is the side lateral raise. And, you know, important is not to use too much of a heavy weight. Make sure that you... Uh, have a controlled range of motion and good form without using the traps because we're using the traps right now during these barbell shrugs during at least five sets uh, i like to do this three times a week just one exercise on a random day for the traps because the traps are really what's building the upper back thickness and there is no better exercise to build them than the traditional classic golden era shrugs barbell shrugs um, important here is that you must always be able to hit a full range of motion so go all the way up but also all the way down a lot of people don't really stretch out their traps at the bottom and they can't even go all the way up so it kind of turns into this weird bobbing movement with the entire body and it just doesn't look good you want to be able to do a heavy weight properly just like this this is the first set 100 kilos and we're going pretty heavy because the heavier you go the more load is put upon your traps 15, 25, 15, 15, 20. Pretty heavy. But we have to build those traps. Mop! Good. Easy. So that's basically a heavy set for me. Uh, it was about uh, 200 kilos, I believe. And we went up to 230 kilos because I still was able to do 10 pretty clean reps. And when you're able to do that, you should go even heavier because the traps can take a lot of weight. And it's one of my, you know, not really weak points, but it's one of my points to improve, to really bring the traps upwards and backwards, creating the thickness in the upper back. So that is why shrugs is my favorite to-do exercise for the traps right now. Alrighty guys, just got done working out. I just had my shake of 35 grams of whey isolate, and I had my amino acids, my BCAAs, during training, during this chest training, there's some cardio afterwards, then at the post-workout shake, and I'm home about 30 minutes later, and let's check out the post-workout meal. So right here we got the post-workout meal, guys, filled with protein, vegetables, and carbs, of course, because I don't take carbs right after working out, just the protein, so I can have more carbs in this meal. 
This is pasta with chili flakes in it, you know, a nice variation. 80 grams of that, whole wheat of course. These are actually vegetarian meatballs. They taste amazing and I put 125 grams of white fish in here and 300 grams of mixed vegetables. You know, I think it is very important to have enough vegetables in your diet. When you work out, when you train, when you move, you use up minerals, vitamins, also in your metabolism when you eat a lot. Your body requires these to be able to function. And when you take in not enough vegetables, you know, you will feel sluggish, you will feel more tired, you won't be able to do the same things with the same amount of energy, and you will just not feel as energized. And sometimes it's not the calories, it's not the carbs, it's not the macronutrients, but it's the micronutrients that will get you beyond where you are right now. So, getting enough vegetables, I like to use mixed vegetables, fresh ones. That's very easy, but you can also use asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, onion, bell peppers, even pumpkin, whatever you like, as long as you take in enough vegetables each day. And every one of my meals, for about four meals a day at least, I have 200 grams of vegetables to 300 grams, so, you know, that's quite a lot, but I love it. Anyway, put some spice in here, uh, turmeric, I mean. A little salt, a little Cajun spices, and I'm going to enjoy this meal right now. Alright guys, that was the workout video. I hope you enjoyed it. But let me talk about a clothing just a little bit. As you can see right here, we're already uh, selling the clothing locally because we already have all the clothing bought and designed and basically stored in our living room right now. I'll post a picture on the, of this later on on Instagram, seeing, you know, just to show you guys how much we actually got. But I'm really busy working on the website and finishing up the final touches, just like the shipping, uh, the way how we're gonna ship. We don't want to make it too expensive for people overseas, like in America, Canada. Europe won't be a problem because that's pretty much, you know, the European Union has that covered. But doing it overseas, we don't want it to be impossibly expensive. So we're finding a solution for that. But that solution will present itself to us incredibly soon. So expect the website to be launched within the couple of days because everything is set except for that little detail. I just wanted to share it with you guys because lots of people have been asking about the workout clothing, but trust me, it's all ready and set, and it's only time to go. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to stay golden. Create the ultimate V shape. Classic. Bow and arrow. Bodybuilding.